Hey folks, Mike Naso here with a Tuesday evening tropical update video. Taking a look at the Atlantic on this upper level water vapor imagery, here is our large and powerful Hurricane Lee, still a Category 3 major hurricane as it slowly moves west-northwest. Here is Hurricane Margo, which has a bit of an uncertain future as far as where it will go and how strong it will be. And we are still watching our area there near Africa, although it looks much less organized than it did just 24 hours ago. On this image, you can see this cold front coming through areas there of the Midwest and the eastern U.S., and that's going to help erode any ridging and allow Hurricane Lee to slide to the north. So that is saving the United States. This right here is saving the United States from the landfall of Hurricane Lee. Here's the latest on Hurricane Lee as of 5 p.m. Lee was at 24.7 north, 66.4 west. Wind's still 115 miles per hour, although the aircraft flying around out there indicated they might be a little lower than this. So there's a chance that Lee is a Category 2 hurricane again, but right now they're holding it as a low-end Category 3, moving northwest at 7, so it is starting to move a little more northerly than westerly, and it's still very slow at 7 miles per hour. It should remain a hurricane all the way into the weekend, as it slides to the west of Bermuda. But Bermuda, you are now under a tropical storm watch because the wind field of this hurricane has expanded. And then eventually, by Saturday night and Sunday, it should move ashore somewhere in Nova Scotia as a hurricane that will be quickly transitioning into a post-tropical cyclone, but still packing a punch. Here's the wind field, and again, the hurricane continues to grow in size. So the hurricane force winds now extending out 125 miles from the center. Last time I spoke to you, they were 80 miles from the center. So this is becoming a large hurricane with the tropical storm force winds extending almost 240 miles out. So by the time all is said and done, you could have tropical storm force winds extending outward at least 300 miles from the center, and that is why Bermuda, even if you don't have a direct landfall, you can be in tropical storm winds and possibly even hurricane winds. If it turns quicker to the east, you could get clipped. So do not be surprised if Bermuda finds itself under a hurricane watch pretty soon. The model forecast, again, is pretty straightforward. These are the European ensembles. There's still a few that take it to areas there of Cape Cod or the main coastline, but almost all of them are over areas there near Nova Scotia, and the same is true for the GFS models, winding it west of Bermuda, east of Cape Cod, straight into Nova Scotia. Where exactly it makes landfall might not matter if impacts are widespread. This is a map here of areas, looks like it's going to come very, very close to St. Mary's Bay in this area here, or the Bay of Fundy. So again, there are communities and towns, so if you're in that area, watch it. Not to mention the Gulf of Maine. All these areas here, St. George, St. Andrews, Black Harbor, areas near St. John, could really experience a wallop after Hurricane Fiona's impact to Atlantic Canada last year. Uh, nobody wants anything like Lee. Here's the visible satellite imagery as the sun goes down. The eye has gotten a little better organized. The pressure's been dropping a little bit. It's trying to strengthen, but again, it's not having a good time because it's so widespread now. It's doing, uh, you know, how size matters when it comes to hurricane storm surge potential. It also matters with regard to wind because if a hurricane has a tight inner core, it can strengthen very quickly. The looser and more round and ragged this thing is, it might not be able to intensify as quickly, but those winds are now expanded big time, and that will cause uh, much more impacts in a larger area. Here's a better look at the uh, lar large-scale imagery. Notice these winds here blowing from Florida straight across. That is not favorable for development, and we can see the flattening there on the western side. The hurricane is not in as ideal an environment as it was a few days ago when it was a Category 5. Nevertheless, deep convection, very powerful storm, at least 105 to 115 mile an hour hurricane, barreling very slowly northwest. It will eventually take more of a north-northwest turn through time. But again, thank goodness for that front, because here's the United States, here's the Abaco Islands, the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, and look at how close Lee became to being a landfall. So we're always watching because you never know how close these storms are going to get. 
The wind shear is going to increase as Lee gets further to the northwest, especially with this troughiness off the eastern seaboard. So it's going to be in a much more unfavorable environment, not to mention cooler waters. And a lot of these water temperatures, by the way, have been cooled by hurricanes Franklin and Idalia. Remember those? <laughs> those hurricanes actually cooled some of the water temperatures, so not only will Lee be dealing with water that's a little bit cooler as it moves north, but also upwelled from those hurricanes, as well as higher wind shear. So that should allow it to be a much weaker hurricane than it is right now by the time it does get close to Atlantic Canada. The wind shear tendencies in the central Atlantic and the Caribbean, not too bad. We're going to watch this area because this hurricane season, despite being an El Nino year, we could see some Caribbean activity in October, and we can't rule out a storm or two off Africa as well that we've been watching so carefully. Right now, we do have a hurricane off Africa, Hurricane Margo, 31.7 north, 39.6 west, and winds of 80. It's a Category 1 hurricane moving north at 14, and it should remain a hurricane and then weaken to a tropical storm. But this is five days out, so not a whole lot of motion, and here's why. The computer models went crazy with Hurricane Margo today. This is the European Ensemble from 12Z. It looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Some of the models keep it in here. Some take it all the way towards France. We have no idea where this thing's going. We do know that if you take the consensus, this black line... It looks like a plate of linguine there. It kind of just scrolls around and stays. So the Hurricane Center is guessing that it's going to be a hurricane and then gradually weaken slowly and just kind of be out there moving generally north. But it could move much further and quicker. It could dissipate quicker. It could be stronger. It could stick around. We really don't know. The good news is, other than the Azores potentially being impacted, we shouldn't see land impacts from Hurricane Margo. Here's Margo on the satellite. It doesn't look too good. Looks a little scraggly to me, doesn't it? A little bit kind of just not that well organized, a little skeleton-y for a hurricane. You want some deeper convection than that. But it still has good outflow, and it is still a Category 1 hurricane, and it could maintain itself over the next day or two as it moves on into the Atlantic. The wave off Africa are 2 Invest 97 and 98L, uh, it does not look so good today. The ensemble models of the Europeans still show it becoming a strong hurricane and taking a track very similar to Hurricane Lee with another system forming off Africa behind it. The GFS sort of doing the same thing with another strong hurricane close to Bermuda uh, by the time the 21st, 22nd comes along. And then we also have another system off Africa. But I do have to say, looking at this water vapor satellite, there ain't much left. These do not look good right now. I think they're getting sheared uh, pretty badly here from the northwest, so that could be impacting it. But again, I always watch areas like this. I remember Hurricane Iris in October of 2001 was one of these disorganized waves that slowly made it to the Caribbean and then became a Caribbean hurricane. Major hurricane, Category 4 in Belize. Very small, though. But... This wave leaving Africa doesn't look like much. This blob over Africa could do something. So again, we're watching, but right now, I'm not that impressed. So we're going to keep an eye on everything as fall starts to feel more like fall here in the uh, areas there of the Midwest as the front moves through that saving America from Hurricane Lee. The Wrath of Lee will direct whatever energy towards Atlantic Canada. We'll be watching it. Margo up here, not sure what she's going to do, but it should remain out over water. And there is still a high likelihood from the Hurricane Center that this wave will develop as it moves to the west, and we'll see what else happens. I'm Mike Nasa with the latest on Hurricane Lee, Hurricane Margot, and the tropics. Please like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.